In 2016, one of the most common criticisms of Bernie Sanders was that his base of support was not diverse enough, it was mostly male. Of course, you know that I am referring to the Bernie bro myth. Now, I posited back in 2016 that the reason why his base of support was likely male and likely predominantly uh, white was because he came from a mostly white small state of Vermont. So he had almost no national name recognition. Nobody really knew who he was. Now, younger people did in fact um, support Bernie Sanders of all demographics, right? But older generations did in fact flock to Hillary Clinton. Now, the reason why we're talking about this is because the narrative is starting to shift a little bit. In 2019, the Bernie bro myth absolutely holds no weight whatsoever because that was proven correct. Now that he has more name recognition, people are flocking to Bernie Sanders' campaign because surprise, surprise, when you have an all-inclusive message that's bold, that's authentic, people admire that. They want someone who they know will fight for them. And now that people know about Bernie Sanders, well, his base of support has changed dramatically. So not only is his base now comprised mostly of women, it's also incredibly diverse racially, and it's comprised disproportionately of younger voters, which is incredibly important for winning general elections. Now, if you thought that the Bernie bro myth's death would be the end of Bernie Sanders' you know, criticisms with regard to his base of support... You'd be wrong, but now that I've got you caught up about the Bernie bro myth, you know, circa 2015 to 2019, we'll stick a pin in that conversation and come back to it later. But now I want to talk about the endorsements that Bernie Sanders received from Ilhan Omar, uh, Ocasio-Cortez, which will be made official on Saturday, and the endorsement from Rashida Tlaib, which it seems as if she'll be making on October 27th. Now, when it comes to the endorsement that AOC is giving to Bernie Sanders, What's really remarkable about this is that Bernie Sanders found out about this endorsement after he had his heart attack when he was still in the hospital. So I need you to just take a moment to think about how meaningful that really is. If you're a strategist in DC and you're an advisor to someone like AOC, you're probably going to tell her, look, long term, you need to think about your career and to endorse someone who just had a heart attack. Well, that doesn't seem like their campaign is going to go anywhere. So wouldn't you want to back the winning candidate? Why would you endorse him now? But AOC was principled and she decided to endorse him anyway because she believes in his message. And, you know, her existence as a politician was catalyzed in part due to Bernie Sanders' revolution, right? So for her to go out of her way to endorse him and let him know about that while he's in the hospital, that is so meaningful. That's so important. It makes it that much more special. And when you combine that with the fact that Ilhan Omar put out such a beautiful video explaining why she prefers Bernie Sanders over everyone else, um, it really shows us that there's finally people in power who are bold enough to rally behind a candidate with a truly universal progressive agenda who wants bold structural change who's trying to get us on that trajectory of you know social democracy which we desperately need bernie's not going to be able to solve all of our problems i'm aware of that but if he could just shift the overton window enough have an fdr slash reagan type of political revolution where he gets us on that trajectory and changes the status quo and political discourse for the better, we will all be better off, right? It's about laying the groundwork for political change. But of course, since he was endorsed by some of the most progressive vocal members of Congress, you know, the establishment elites in the media, they're trying to downplay this endorsement, of course, because why wouldn't they? So for example, Marcos Melitza's founder of the Daily Coast, who creepily sent Nancy Pelosi thousands of flowers, downplayed these endorsements, wondering if they'll actually register at all since we've all, quote, evolved past endorsements, and, quote, no one cares, but wonders if AOC will be the exception. Now, he was saying something a little bit different a year ago when he enthusiastically wrote a glowing endorsement for Beto O'Rourke. But I mean, just remember, endorsements only matter to media elites if someone that they like is endorsing someone that they like. But if someone that they like is endorsing someone who they don't like, or someone who they don't like is endorsing someone who they don't like, they don't matter at all. So, you know, it, it just... <laughs> See how they move the goalpost like in real time? It's embarrassing, right? The lack of consistency here 
should permanently delegitimize these types of people. They're hacks, they're frauds. Uh, but nonetheless, they keep coming up with reasons to downplay Bernie Sanders. And as Nina Turner recently said, they're never going to give him credit because he is a threat to the status quo. But that's just one person. That's Marcos of the Daily Coast. We already know that he's a hack. Um, but what's really interesting is bringing the Bernie bro narrative back into play. Again, the common criticism of Bernie was his campaign was too white. It was too male. Now, the opposite criticism is what at least one CNN anchor is choosing to lob against Bernie Sanders. Rather than saying, you know, Bernie's base of support, maybe it's too white. Now he's questioning whether or not it's too urban. A CNN anchor literally said this. Not kidding. See for yourself. Sources that special guest is going to be Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, she's the fresh woman uh, phenom from, from that part of the country, that part of, of New York. Uh, she's going to be endorsing Bernie Sanders. And I'm also told sources say uh, that uh, Ilhan Omar and Congresswoman uh, Rashida Tlaib, Congresswoman Omar, Congresswoman Tlaib from um, Minnesota and Michigan, respectively, also going to be endorsing uh, Bernie Sanders. So even if he's not a headline out of this evening, he has some headlines coming. It's an extension of what we see tonight, a debate about not only who is going to lead the party, but where is the party going to go? Which part of the party is going to lead the party into the 2020 election? They are more of the younger, fresher face, more aggressive, more liberal, uh, less compromising. Uh, let's talk about working with Republicans. And one of the questions for Bernie Sanders has been in a very different race this time. Can he find a lane to victory? There is no doubting his fundraising. There is no doubting the depth of his support across the country. But is it in the teens? Can he get into 20s? How do you win? That will certainly help him. But it will also, I think, Senator Klobuchar is coming in to join us now, have some of the other candidates say, wait a minute. You know, is this too far left? Is this too uncompromising? Is it too urban? Is it too internet? Does the Democratic Party need to find a broader audience? It is going to stoke the very debate we saw play out on the stage tonight. Yeah, that's a big yikes from me. That is a big yikes from me. I'll read you the quote. Is this too far left? Is this too uncompromising? Is this too urban? Is it too internet? Does the Democratic Party need to find a broader audience? It is going to stoke the very debate we saw play out on the stage tonight. So he said this after the debate when news broke that Bernie Sanders would in fact be receiving the endorsements of members of the squad. Is it too urban? What a strange, um, interesting thing to say. Let me ask you, what exactly do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Do you mean that Maybe Bernie Sanders' base of support is now too diverse. Maybe his surrogates are too diverse, too female. Maybe that'll scare away some of the Trump voters that you think we have to win over. I mean, what an idiotic thing to say. And you can kind of tell that once he said it, he regretted it because he tried to quickly move on, right? Is this too internet? What do you mean too internet? Obama was too internet, you can argue, and... He landed in the White House. So this criticism is idiotic. But, you know, this is what happens when you are scrambling to find ways to downplay something that is actually really significant. The AOC and squad endorsements, these are the most important endorsements of this cycle. The most important. It's why Elizabeth Warren was aggressively courting AOC's endorsement. Because she knows that if you want to get credibility among progressives, you've got to get that endorsement of the most vocal progressive. She didn't get it because she's not the most progressive. Bernie is. So now um, Bernie Sanders is back up to being a threat again. I don't necessarily know that this will affect him in the polls in a really substantial way. I am assuming it will, but the fact that this could help him, that's more than enough for them to start going back on the offensive and attacking Bernie Sanders. They kind of laid off a little bit because, you know, he had a heart attack, so we'll give him a break. And in their view, hopefully the heart attack would be disqualifying enough. But it's not. He's already starting to rise again in the polls. So, look, it, it honestly does not matter. As much as the establishment fawns over Obama, if Obama came out to endorse Bernie Sanders, they would suddenly turn on Obama. You have to understand, they will never stop moving the goalpost, because this isn't about impartiality and objective commentary. This is about individuals who are pushing for specific candidates, and if 
they don't have a particular horse that they're backing. They certainly know who they don't like. And almost all of these media elites, Marcos Melitzas, um, that CNN anchor, I don't know what his name is, you know, these are very wealthy people. Uh, a lot of them live in D.C., a lot of them are one percenters. They have a lot of money, so they don't like that Bernie Sanders is going to tax them at a higher rate, the highest rate, out of anyone in the race. So they put class solidarity above all else. And that's what we're seeing. They're scrambling to rationalize reasons for why anything that happens that's a positive for Bernie is actually bad because they want you to feel discouraged. They want you to feel as if the situation is hopeless, so just stop trying. But whenever they say things like that, whenever they try to convince you that it's pointless and we have no shot, that's all nothing more than gaslighting. We just work extra hard when we see them smear Bernie Sanders because that means that what we're doing is enough to scare them. And so long as they're scared, we have a shot. When they start not even talking about Bernie Sanders as a real threat, that's when we know we have to work extra hard. But we already have to work extra hard. But understand, we're doing something right if we have members of the elite class and the establishment scared. And they are. So keep up the good work.